Hi, it's great to see you. In our last episode number 10, we took a traveling break and we introduced counting. I hope you all had a great night's sleep because we have a big adventure coming up next. Today, let's experience different kinds of directional signs and symbols that you will see as you go along in your music. Signs like these. Why are they so important? We certainly wouldn't want you to get lost somewhere in your music or anywhere else. Just as you prepare with your tools, a good pencil with an eraser, maybe sticky notes to help zoom in on sections, a good reading light, a music stand, and a clip to hold the music flat, a good seat at proper height if needed, and proper position with your instrument. Focus and envision a positive outcome. It may be a sweet song and you're feeling more comfortable or feeling the excitement of learning how to play dotted quarter notes. Let's also prepare for a terrific journey ahead to one of the new seven natural wonders of the world. For 26 miles, through spectacular scenery, majestic mountains, roaring rivers, jungles, and ruins, to Cusco, a city in Peru in South America, where the city elevation is as high as the clouds at 11,000 feet, 3,350 meters above sea level. The spectacular Andes Mountains, our hiking journey on the Inca Trail. Gorgeous and a little overwhelming, I know. So let's approach this like we would with our music. Let's relax at our base camp to acclimate to the high altitude and check our plan. In music, we would first map out the form. In pop music, there may be an introduction with verses and choruses and a bridge or a hook. In theory terms, we call it the intro, A, B, C, etc., or coda. We will plan our hiking route as well. There may be many important signs along the way. The sun is rising, we've had a good night's sleep, so let's take it step by step, starting at our base camp, the beginning of our song, Time to hit the trail and explore what's ahead. So as we're going along in our music, you remember bar lines, the vertical lines which go neatly from top to bottom of the staff, marking boundaries. And then inside those bar lines are called measures or bars, where notes and rests are placed for a specific number of beats. Musical form is full of patterns and repeats inside those measures. You may see a repeat the beat symbol instead. You can notate it either way. Sometimes it's more convenient to write a repeating pattern with repeat symbols to save time writing or flipping pages. Either way works. We all love singing repeated patterns and repeated choruses. You learned best from an early age the joy of repetition, doing things over and over. Just like when we practice, we feel it get better and better. Your audience also loves to hear your favorite songs over and over. Repeats are part of the fun. This one measure repeat symbol, repeat slash with two dots, means to repeat the entire measure before it. Either way works. It's like being on a path and there are two routes ahead. They both end up in the same place. Either way works. This two measure repeat symbol with the two slashes and the number two means to repeat the entire two measures before it. You can also repeat the last four measures. Any more than four, just use regular repeat signs up ahead. Speaking of measures, do you know how to count the measures? The first full measure is one, the next measure is two, then three, then four, etc. Sometimes they're numbered for you, Sometimes not. Sometimes they only mark the measure numbers at the beginning of each system, beginning of each line, and you have to fill in the rest of the measure numbers. If there are a few notes at the very beginning that do not add up to the time signature, they are called the upbeats, the anacrusis. The upbeats are an uplifting leap of energy before the downbeat at beat one. 
You do play them, but this area is not counted as a full measure. Measure one starts after those upbeats. By the way, if the upbeats are only showing one full count, where do you think the rest of the beats are to add up to one full measure? The measures in the middle do add up to four beats each. The beginning and the end are incomplete. The last measure only has three beats, but the fourth beat is found at the beginning, the upbeat, the anacrusis. So the last measure plus the upbeats will equal one complete measure. If there is no introduction to our song, we can call the beginning part at measure one the A part. In a pop song, it might be the verse. Occasionally, you may see a double bar line, two thin lines, telling us a new sounding section is coming up. Maybe a key change or a chorus part or a new B part. A double bar line with one thin and one thin thick line is called a final bar line. It means stop, the song is over. Ah, but what if it is thick with two dots before it? That's an end repeat bar line. Repeat all the music before it, so go back and repeat. I know, you're asking how far do we have to go back? You go back to the closest repeat sign, called the start repeat bar line. Here you play and have fun with measures 5, 6, 7, and 8 again. But if you don't see a start-repeat bar line, you have to go all the way back to the beginning and replay it all again from the beginning. That's okay. We'll go back to our base camp and refresh. Talk about refreshing. In music, we try not to say it or play it or repeat it the same way twice. Maybe the second time out, we'll play it louder. More on dynamics later. Let's say we're continuing on our trail. And there's a fermata above our note, meaning to hold the note longer than its value. He's a jolly good fellow, so we pause here and we take a deep breath before we continue. In Italy, they literally have signs above their bus stops that say fermata, meaning to wait here for the bus. <gasps> a good time to pause and grab your camera, a llama. Remember, L for a llama and for its long banana-shaped ears and long protruding face and large size weighing up to 400 pounds and 46 inches tall. This is its smaller cousin, the alpaca, with its smaller ears and rounded face. They are very fleecy and only weigh around 185 pounds, 35 inches tall. Ah, let's have a look at these volta brackets ahead. Let's say we were going along and we ran into one of these signs, a first ending. Ending signs are always above the staff. See the number one? That means first ending. Along with a volta bracket, which lets us know how far the first ending goes. Notice the bracket drops here. So we play along, including the first ending, then notice the end repeat bar line, which tells us to go back. We go back to the closest start repeat bar line, if we have one. Otherwise, if not, we just go back to the beginning and repeat. But the second time, we skip the first ending, since we already played it the first time, and jump over to the second ending. Thanks. Notice the volta bracket extends across, so we just keep going. Remember, it's just like reading a book. There's only one ending. In music, first time through, first ending. Second time through, second ending. The music symbols will tell you which ending to pick each time. Up ahead will be our camp out for the night.
Let's relax and see how much you remember from today's journey. Can you answer these questions? Here we go. When we plan music out in sections, we call that plan the form. The vertical lines from top to bottom of the staff marking boundaries are bar lines. The area between the bar lines are called measures or bars. This repeat sign means to repeat the beat. This repeat sign means to repeat one measure before it. The tiny numbers sometimes seen on top are called measure or bar numbers. The notes at the beginning of music in the incomplete measure are called the upbeats or anacrusis. The double bar line that has one thin and one thick line at the end of music is called the final bar line. Two thin bar lines that mean the end of a section is called a double bar line. Two dots before the double bar line is called end repeat bar line. The end repeat bar line means to go back to the closest repeat. Otherwise, if none, go back to the beginning. Two dots after the bar line is called start repeat bar line. The start repeat bar line means to start the repeat from here. This symbol on top or bottom of a note is called fermata. A fermata symbol means to hold the note longer than its value. Wait here. This marking is called a first ending. The bracket part of it is called a falta bracket. The first ending means to play this ending first to the end of the Volta bracket and repeat. This marking is called a second ending. The second ending means to skip the first ending and go directly to the second. Congratulations, you are expanding your music vocabulary and navigating so well through your music. It feels great. We'll see you in the morning for one more day along the Inca Trail in episode 12.